So the name of the project is We Are Columbia. I chose this project as a creative outlet to talk about the history of, of our institution. Um, and so I was a student that ate in our dining hall three meals a day, five days a week. And so I saw portraits that we had of our uh, retired faculty and staff that kind of just painted a picture of a nice cloud of white witnesses that watched us as we ate lunch and dinner. And so I wanted to figure out who these people were and it was hard to get information about them because no one had really written it down. And so when you go to ask about who the person was, you get half of a story or a piece or just a name. And so my project was really just kind of reframing that history that we had and then using that to introduce the new community. I was particularly interested in the image that is my portrait because it's a profile shot of an older white man. And I think one of the beautiful things about the We Are Columbia photo exhibit is that um, when you put people of color or women or queer people in a portrait, it really changes how you perceive them. So when you put a black man with a profile shot, it brings up a lot of stuff. The black and white uh, suit and the black tie harkens back to the civil rights movement and some of my elders and ancestors who fought for justice, who fought for representation. It harkens back to uh, Malcolm X. It harkens back to folks who took uh, mug shots in prisons for the cause of justice. And so when you put a black face in that image, it really changes how one might perceive it. In fact, some folks call uh, the portrait Maxwell X. <laughs> One thing you'll, you'll notice when, if you look in the refectory, the, the, the dining hall in this building, um, the portraits tell a particular story about this institution. Um, many, of whom, many of these portraits uh, prior to the project have been white, male. Um, and in many ways, in a lot of people's minds, that's the history of this institution. Um, but for me, having seen uh, these images uh, from this particular project to help me, you know, as a person that's new to this community, think about uh, not only just who's presently here, who's been here in the last several years, but historically who hasn't had their image um, represented in this institution. Um, women, people of color, uh, queer persons. Um, my guess is that they've played an integral part in Columbia's history, but they haven't had um, their images uh, portrayed, their, their input, their, their gifts identified as it relates to how the institution um, has functioned for the past, since 1829. I replicate the picture of Laura Mendenhall, who was the president while I was here. Um, when I was a student here, um, the Presbyterian Church wasn't open to LGBTQ people. And so, and Laura Mendenhall was the president and she, she, so she had to play that role that presidents have to play where they have to support the institution. So we kind of ended up um, butting heads a little bit. Um, and yet one of the things that I learned from Laura was how she did con the confession, the affirmation of um, pardon and how when she did that, she would dip her hands in the water and say, you are forgiven. Um, and so I, so even though we had tension, that was a piece of her that I took with me. And so when they asked me to be a part of it, I said, well, I need to be Laura Mendenhall for just the kind of tension of me replicating her, but also that, that gift um, of how I do ministry and worship. The portrait I had the most fun recreating is a, a portrait of Katie Ricks, um, her portrait has the water feature in it. Uh, and we, we spent two days throwing water in the air, trying to <laughs> get the right look, the right amount of water, the, the hand gesture was proper. Um, yeah, we have a, a nice wet chapel after this <laughs> because of the amount of time we spent just kind of doing hand motions and doing it over and over again. Um, I think that was probably the most fun I had. So this is one of my favorite portraits of Dr. Christine Hong because of the way that she kind of just glows off the canvas. 
Um, she is recreating a picture of Lucy Rose, who was here for quite some time and did a lot of work with the community um, on homelessness. Um, and these two portraits are two very different people, but um, both have the same type of genuine smile that you, you just get to look at often. And both of them have this persona of, you know, wanting to help and being willing to help um, and doing it in ways that are authentic to themselves. Um, and like I said, she glows in ways that like, you just, you can't even pick up. And this isn't something that you edit. This is, is actually what she looks like. <laughs> and so it's, when you capture that in a, in a photograph, it's one of the things that kind of stick with you because you don't have to remaster it. You don't have to retell or take away from anything that she's doing, but it's just her. When you think about the portraits of the walls or in our spaces here on campus, you think about true diversity. Uh, all around the spaces we have people who've come from the globe, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, and from all around America as well. So the portraits kind of uh, provide what you call the reality of diversity. So this portrait uh, is of a former student, Dinah Ba. She was here um, from about 2014-15 to 2018 when she graduated. This picture is significant to me because she was a dear friend and also an international student. She came from Ghana to study here and then was returning home to her country to pursue ministry in many different ways. Unfortunately, she passed away suddenly um, this past summer. Um, but this portrait meant a lot to me because she's one of those folks that didn't quite know why we were doing it, but still wanted to do it. The imagery that it plays a part in my life with um, just being a more diverse, I come from a diverse background as I'm biracial. So, you know, I've seen black, I've seen white, but being here when I first started, I didn't think, I thought it was just all white. I never saw any color until I started seeing more students coming to the refectory and I was like, oh, there's more. It's not just what's on the wall. It's exciting that these portraits tell a new story about our campus, about where we've come from and where we're heading, where we want to go. And I do appreciate that these portraits show not only students, but staff and um, faculty, because our community is not just the students. So when I first heard about the project, I thought it was a great idea. Um, I don't feel like I knew a lot about it until I saw the first round of portraits actually go up on the wall. Um, and so immediately I kind of wanted, wanted to understand the purpose behind it. Um, but even before I kind of understood the attention to detail um, and the fact that the current portraits were sort of posed after portraits that we have up in our factory, um, I liked the project because I was walking through the halls and seeing portraits of folks that I knew and saw every day. And so I felt like it was a really good uh, representation of what our community actually looks like even before I understood kind of the details and so the more I learned the more I appreciated it but even just from an initial gut reaction uh, I had a lot of appreciation for it. You know visual imagery, symbols, media, we all know and all the studies demonstrate that this is deeply formational. It impacts how people think, how people feel, what people are willing to commit to and uh, you know be transformed by so visual communication we do a lot of words around here but here's a visual form of uh, transforming people's imaginations and this this project is really about transforming uh, our community's imaginations about who we are what we were and where we're going so for someone like myself, imagery is everything. I see in that way, I learn in that way. I grasp things through images. And when images don't look like me, I don't know how I fit into that image. So something like this is very important to me as I think about long-term goals. If we started with a group of people that had no complexion near mine, but we end with all different shades, that means that we had a chance to grow.
That means that we had an opportunity to see something different in other people um, and, and let them into that space.